Like we said, today we're talking all about this transformative area of prosthetics. This team of researchers from EPFL is kind of redefining the possibilities of what we what we think is possible in terms of uh, prosthetic limbs. Mm-hmm. Um, the the why here or the backstory, so to speak, is amputees, despite having prosthetic limbs, right? You, you know, all these advancements in robotics um, and other sorts of technology allow them an increasing degree of control over prosthetic limbs. Um, but despite all that, we still lack the sense of touch. So folks that have had a limb amputated, even if they've got a replacement limb, it's really, really challenging for them to experience the sense of touch in that prosthetic limb. Um, That meaningfully includes the ability to perceive temperature, which significantly impacts their day-to-day experiences. If you've never missed your limb or never missed the ability to feel the different temperatures of things, um, you may not realize what you're taking for granted but it's actually a very significant part of the human experience i think is being able to feel temperature in your limbs yeah it definitely lacks the human touch when you can't feel the warmth or the coldness of something like just imagine on a hot summer day you're grabbing a cold coca-cola right like just feeling that on your hand it evokes certain emotions and it kind of makes sense that when you think about prosthetics you know you have your maslow's hierarchy of needs function beat anything else at the beginning right just being able to use that limb that 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 now you've lost that was the most important thing but as time has gone on it would be nice if we could address that sensing capability as well and i i love like the genesis of of this article that we're discussing here because it was totally an accident i think we should get into do you want to get into the story yeah well and just in general right we love when technology is discovered on accident. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a um, it's a cool testament to how some of the most important discoveries ever, I think of things like the microwave, et cetera, have been made completely on accident. Um, and it, it's a reminder to all of us working on cool projects to keep our eyes open for unexpected outcomes and the ability for us to pivot that into something else that might change the world, right? What an inspiring shout out, Dan. I totally agree. <laughs> Uh, so the story, it, it started off with these EPFL researchers working with uh, patients who had amputated limbs, and they had um, isolated a region, a region on the that was still attached on the limb that was amputated to uh, test different temperatures just to get them uh, the patients to tell them where they are feeling that temperature. Just I, I think the m- main purpose of that initial work was how much of the uh, the nerves that are still present in, in that limb uh, working as expected. And so they had them close their eyes so they couldn't see where the temperature was being applied. And what they had anticipated, like let's say if the patient's arm was amputated at the elbow and they were providing the temperature um, effect on the, um, let's say, upper bicep, they were expecting the patient to be like, oh, I'm feeling it on my upper bicep. But they actually started describing like, I am feeling it on my index finger or like I'm feeling it on my thumb. And the researchers were so shocked. They were like, can you can you please elaborate like what you mean by that? <laughs> like that is not connecting at all. And I don't know like if our researchers know this. I didn't know about this until I took um, out of all classes psych in high school. But there's a, a syndrome called phantom limb syndrome where once your limb is am- amputated, if it's your leg or if it's your arm the patient still feels like it's there and sometimes the sensation is so strong i remember reading about this that like for example for legs they would try to stand on the phantom leg that is no longer there because you just feel it like you feel the foot you feel everything about it so in that same sense these folks were feeling those temperatures on the um the limbs that just weren't there and that was really blowing away the researchers that were doing this research yeah, so in this specific case, right, they they were looking at folks who had had their hand amputated mm-hmm. and they were applying temperatures directly to the forearm. So the way they describe it is if you place something hot or cold 
onto the forearm of an individual with an intact hand, you know, assuming their nervous system is working properly, that person will feel that object's temperature locally directly on their forearm, you know, around where you're applying the temperature. But in these specific amputees with phantom limbs that they were experiencing this neurological, um, I don't know, phenomenon where they still experience feeling in that phantom limb, the, the limb that's been cut off, they were applying temperature to the residual arm. So what's left of the arm, but they could feel the sensation in their phantom limb. If you were using a very concentrated area of the forearm, they could feel temperature in their missing hand. Um, so I'm not quite sure how that all happens in the brain, but you know, my, my bro science version of that is I think like the brain is trying to compensate or trying to understand the fact that that limb is no longer there and that you're no longer receiving neural impulses from the, like the nerve endings in that phantom limb. And it, it's like, it's almost like crosstalk. It, it's, it's feeling n- nerve stimulation in a certain part of the forearm. And it's recognizing that as though it were in the phantom limb that's been amputated. And now, am gonna, I on the right track? I'm, I'm going to try to follow up on your bro science with my own bro science. Um, I think you're on the right track. And I think it might have to do something with like, you know, when, when that portion of the limb was amputated, the nerve endings uh, also went with it, but they, they were connected to like the central nervous system and they were connected via the nerves that are still remaining in that residual uh, portion of the limb. What these researchers noted is that the locations on the residual limb that could, um, I don't know, augment those sensations are very specific. Like you can't just put it anywhere and, and get that feeling. You have to put it in very specific spots to get that sensation going. So my, my hunch is like a very similar to yours is that the brain is kind of like getting tricked into thinking that, hey, once that sensation is there, I am still picking up that phantom index finger or thumb or whatever. So they stumble upon this accidental discovery, right? right. Oh my goodness. In a very, very concentrated part of the forearm, this patient can feel temperature in their limb that's missing. Um, Instead of just writing a paper about it and saying, wow, this is interesting and stopping there, this team from EPFL took it a step further. And what they did is they started to um, mimic the the rest of the the missing, uh, let's say like neural architecture that would allow this person to sense temperature Mm -hmm. and then use that as a method of granted a crude method at this point but a a method of replacing the ability to feel temperature so what they did is they um included a heat sensor on the prosthetic limb so on the prosthetic hand let's say they would include heat sensors that would allow them to allow the person with the prosthetic hand to feel the temperature that was locally occurring on the hand remember they can't actually feel their hand because their hand's been cut off it's an artificial hand they've got a heat sensor on that hand and this heat sensor detects changes in temperature similarly to the way that your skin might. So they're trying to mimic the way that the skin might have, you know, started to comprehend temperature changes if that hand were there and it were a human hand. This heat sensor is then connected to a thermode, which again uses electricity to produce different temperatures. And these thermodes are pressed against the residual limb in that very specific section that stimulates phantom limb sensation so what they're doing is they're sensing the temperature on the on the prosthetic limb and then stimulating somewhere on the forearm that makes someone feel in the phantom limb that same temperature so that the person can feel in their phantom limb the same temperature that's being locally um sensed on the prosthetic hand right right and that's like a three part of that you got to think about right you have stage one where it was the epiphany of oh my god people can feel stuff on their fingertips then there's stage two which is like um well now that we have that knowledge how do we integrate it into something and they were like great we can put these thermal resistors on the fingertips that tell us what that temperature is then translate it with a, another device onto the arm where we can emulate that in, entire like sensation so there's discovery And the realization of like what you can do with this discovery to make something useful for people. And I think, you know, this is all very interesting and definitely the most obvious part of the secret sauce here is the fact that they've they've figured out this phenomenon that in a very localized area of the residual limb, people can still sense 
temperature as though or experience it as though it were in the phantom limb but i think another interesting part of this um that is a little bit of a departure from different approaches we might see in in this space is they're not trying to electrically stimulate the nervous system to simulate the 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 feeling of temperature what they're doing is they're allowing the brain to fill in the gaps on its own doing what it has tried to do you know in the absence of that limb which is repurposed a very small section of the nervous system toward feeling sensation in that phantom limb so again i, I think it's a little really interesting they didn't try to biohack the nervous system um by hooking wires up to it and trying to provide the correct amount of electrical charge to the nervous system so that it might feel a certain sensation or temperature there are almost certainly research teams doing that to try and replicate the sense of touch for artificial limbs but what this team from epfl did that was different is they they found this tiny little part on the residual limb that can experience temperature and again the brain interprets that as though it were in the phantom limb they're not trying to over engineer it they're literally just replicating the temperature that's happening at the heat sensor again in that area of the residual limb and letting the brain connect the dots instead of trying to you know ground up engineer a new nervous system and that's an important distinction to make in comparison to the other state-of-the-art um, approaches for this problem because it's also non-invasive so with, with all this other stuff where you're trying to bypass the signal um from somewhere to your brain or whatever um, you, you have to usually go through surgery and in this case you don't all the heavy lifting is being done for you with external sensors and your body's natural mechanism is tricking itself into thinking that that phantom limb is now feeling that sensation which i think is like i don't know one of the better implementations of biohacking that we've seen yeah right? i i agree for sure and i will say this is still pretty early on in the mm -hmm. process right they're not ready to roll this out you know on the order of millions of people right away but they have tested this with a set of patients i think it was 25 30 patients yep. that tested this same setup right heat sensor on the end of an artificial limb um then a local thermode in the residual limb to stimulate what would be the phantom limb with temperature um i think it's 27 patients could all successfully experience temperature in their phantom limb using this prototype system that the team from epfl developed which you know again very early stages if they've only tested a few dozen people but it is really really encouraging that it wasn't something that happened just once for one patient it's something that they were able to replicate with a broad set of patients and it's encouraging to me because i think that provides them some momentum to start progressing further into different clinical studies and get this out there to where people without again without having to get a really invasive surgery can start to experience again what i view to be a really key part of the human experience which is you know being able to feel the temperature of something when you touch it with your hand totally agree and like for me every so often we talk about some like um new discovery within any given field that might seem very elementary like in the very early stages but the reason i find them so fascinating is because i think it's the start of like a paradigm shift like we're talking about prosthetics, how the norm has been like just completely focused on function. We've seen prosthetics become lighter and then um, more higher performance for people that want to do athletics. And that's all great. But now you see like maybe potentially the focus can shift to like, how do we take them to the next level by adding feel? And these folks have proven that you can do that without some like very expensive, very invasive surgery. You can get modern technology to kind of comp compensate for that in collaboration with just your natural brain chemistry and that that's the exciting part at least for me and i think definitely for folks who have experienced something as tragic as an amputation right i'm really excited that excited that this technology is developing and in, in a way that you know it, again it's a remarkable development but it's developing in a way that increases the sensory feedback for these users enhances their overall experience enhances their quality of life i i view it as you know again thinking of other sorts of sensory enrichment so to speak mm -hmm. i i view it as the difference between um maybe watching someone eat a cookie or being able to smell that cookie while you watch someone eat it and you know again you're you're just going from having only visual feedback to visual plus one other sense. 
Um, but that really but makes a difference. I, I imagine that deeply enriches it. And I think that things like that, the feeling, the sensation of touch in that phantom limb is probably something that's highly therapeutic for these people. And also will probably help encourage adoption of these new state of the art uh, prosthetic limbs. If someone's able to actually start to get some um, sensory stimulation from the use of the technology. You're absolutely I think right. It, be super interesting to see if they can simulate other parts of touch as well right can you feel texture can mm -hmm. you feel pressure can you stimulate that in parts of the residual limb or is temperature one of the only things that responds to this phenomenon um, and we've got to find another way to solve pressure or to solve texture and other things that we can feel with our sense of touch yeah i'm pretty curious to see that as well and just a quick note when you were talking about the difference that one extra sensory input can have i think one of the first lines in the article is the first pa patient that they tested this approach with. And um, he really expressed like, almost like the, the romantic nature of being able to feel temperature again. So I don't think you're off the mark there at all. I think that that's a pretty accurate uh, estimation on how this is gonna impact people's lives. But yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't think there's a better way to sum this up than to read that quote directly. If you're cool, ahead. I do that. Yeah. So this is Francesca Rossi, one of the people that tested this. Um, she's an amputee from Italy and she tested out again, tested out this, uh, prosthetic system from EPFL. She said, when I touch the stump with my hand, I feel it's tingling in my missing hand, my phantom hand, but the feeling and temperature variation is a different thing. It's something important and something beautiful. I think, I don't know. I can't wrap Simply this episode put. up any better than that. Right. Yeah. No, that's perfect. I think it might be worth doing a quick recap though, as, as we usually try to do. Do you want to do a quick ELI five of what's happening here? Yeah, I would. I would absolutely love to, man. So essentially, high level at the problem, people who have lost a limb and use a prosthetic, aka a fake limb, often can't feel temperature. That means they can't feel if things are hot or cold when they touch them with their prosthetic arm. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel as real to them if you don't have that sensation of touch. Um, this research team from EPFL developed a new system that allows prosthetics to mimic the feeling of temperature. They found this out on accident by feeling that a certain part of the person's remaining limb, the part that's still there after an amputation, can still feel heat and cold in the phantom limb, the feeling that that missing limb is still there. So they made a system with a heat sensor that can detect temperature changes just like skin does. They then connect this to a device called a thermode that's placed on the part of the limb that's still there. That thermode can make that part of the skin feel warmer or cooler. When those skin nerves are stimulated by the thermodes, they send signals back into the brain. And the brain interprets these signals as though they were feeling warm or cool in the missing limb. I think it's a really interesting and a really impactful discovery for people who have experienced amputation and are using prosthetic limbs because they can feel things that are more real and it improves their quality of life for the people who are using this technology. Incredible. Perfect wrap up. Um, with that said, before we wrap up the episode for real, I want to quickly shout out the folks of Azerbaijan. Man, you guys, I think it's like, what, two weeks in a row, three weeks in a row, you've been making us trend on your Apple podcast technology charts. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for the love. I, I appreciate, we appreciate it. I we, think one we week definitely do. you guys made us like top five or top 10, which is even I, what to do with all this love, you know? I, I can't believe it. Yeah. So thank you guys. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and as always, we will catch you in the next one. Peace.